Okay, this is a, another method for making ultrasound or um, graphite or graphene coated sand composites used for water filtration. Now, I apologise that the thing's a bit talky. It's talky because the, um, the method is actually astonishingly simple, it's just consuming in time. It takes quite a long time to do it, but it's very easy to do. Now, what you're going to need to do this is um, some sand, and you just need some ordinary builder's sand. I bought this from the local do it yourself store in a bag. Uh, you could dig it out from a river, you could dig it out from, um, from the beach if you want. You want somewhere between 200 and 500 uh, grain size, something like that. And it gives you a fine sand that you can um, coat with uh, a carbon complex. Now, <laughs> the carbon you're going to coat it with is asphaltene or bitumen, it's pretty much the same stuff. And um, the way to get that is with uh, some toluene, which will dissolve the stuff and a source of your bitumen. Now, this is actually just a bit of pavement from um, a roadworks up by me. They dug this stuff out and they were going to throw it away, so I got a couple of lumps and I put it into a jam jar with some toluene and shook it until the um, bitumen dissolved off and it left all the rocks and sand in the bottom and I poured off the, um, the material, which is my uh, toluene and bitumen mix, into a jar and collected it that way. So that's one way to collect it. Another way is they use um, asphalt for tar roofs. So if you go to a roofing company and you can buy yourself a kilogram there. Uh, another way is that they use it in um, lots and lots of different paints. And this is a bitumen primer. And that is predominantly uh, bitumen and toluene mixed together. And all you have to do is get yourself a spoonful of it, put it into a jam jar, add some toluene and um, stir it up. Now, one of the problems with that methodology is that there's no accurate way of telling you how much asphaltine you've got in there, so you're going to have to experiment, because you get different carbon loadings, and um, it's an easy enough thing to do, just set out 100 grams and do different carbon loadings of them, add more toluene to it until you get a thinner mix, and um, then process the whole thing afterwards, and you'll get different results from each one, and just look for the one that's the best result so that you can match your process into whatever source of um, asphaltine bitumen that you happen to have. So wherever you are, whatever source of bitumen or asphaltine you've got, it's essentially the same process. You're going to have to experiment a little bit at the beginning to get the carbon uh, loading right to make your uh, ultrasound filtration units. So that's what you're going to have to do. Um, again, very, very simple. Just get your bitumen into your toluene solution and then change the percentage concentrations of your toluene solution so you've got lower concentrations and higher concentrations and perform an experiment. Run the process, get your samples and see which one does the best job for you. Now these kind of filters are very good for removing organic contaminants and pathogens. Uh, they do remove some heavy metals like arsenic I believe, but predominantly they're meant for uh, removing um, pesticides, colorants, organic contaminants and pathogens and that's what they do really, really well at. Um, the way you make a filtration uh, unit out of these is just to give them a deep enough bed and, and let the water drip through, it will drip through clean. Now, once you've got your um, bitumen in your toluene solution and you're happy with the concentration, all you do with it is uh, literally pour it onto the sand and stir it. Now, you need to dry it at 95 degrees for about five hours, and that's a bit of a drag. Uh, what I do is I pour the sand into this thing. And this thing is just a slow cooker. It gets to about 90-95 degrees. And I pour the sand into there, pour the toluene onto the sand, mix it up so it's evenly coated, turn it on, and then stir it for five hours, which is a bit dull. But if you want to do um, a little stirring machine, it should be quite easy to set up a bucket with a, a stick that you turn around and stirs it for you. Uh, otherwise, just get yourself a video on your computer, um, make a nice cup of coffee, and sit somewhere for five hours and stir it. Now because it's toluene, of course, it is a little stinky. And because it's bitumen, it sticks to everything. So when you're doing this, it's best off done outside. It's best off wearing gloves and old clothes. And somewhere you're not going to walk toluene spots or bitumen spots over nice carpets. So do it sensibly and it's an easy enough thing to do. Okay, so once you get it in there and you're stirring it at 95 degrees for five hours, it will dry. The fumes aren't very bad, especially if you're outside. It just smells a bit like tar and it dries over those five hours, and after those five hours what you get is a um, bitumen covered sand. Again, you'll play with the um, carbon coated loading. Now, sand is very unusual in that when you put a carbon compound on it and heat it, it will actually graphitize the carbon compound. 
Now the good thing about this method is, the next stage takes far less energy. Now you're not going to be able to do it unless you've got a controlled heating source that will go up to 400 degrees centigrade and stay there for three hours. So you really need some kind of kiln or oven or um, furnace that you can do that with. Now I happen to have one so it's easy enough for me. So once it's dry, what you do is pour it into a stainless steel container and then you cover it with this stuff. This stuff is activated carbon. Now you're supposed to do it in a um, non-reducing atmosphere like nitrogen and that's quite hard to get. So it's much easier to pour it into your stainless steel, put some kind of separator on like a bit of paper and put a layer of activated carbon on it. Then you raise the temperature to 400 degrees centigrade over one hour and you hold it at 400 degrees centigrade for three hours. And at the end of that three hour period, what you will get out is this stuff. And this is your ultrasound. That's what you've been looking for. Now it's nearly ready to go. What you have to do is activate it. And you activate it pretty much in the same way that they make activated carbons. That is, you soak it in uh, concentrated sulfuric acid for about 30 minutes. So with this one, you pour in the acid, stirring it up a little bit until it just comes a little bit above it. And then you leave it for um, 30 minutes. At the end of 30 minutes, you dry it to 120 degrees centigrade, just in an oven. Uh, I have an old oven that I use for this kind of thing that's out in the back. And it doesn't matter that they um, filling it with acid fumes because it doesn't matter if it rots in the oven. It cost me £30, I've had it two or three years. If it does break down, I shall just get another one. But you are heating um, acid off of here, so it, it will, um, again, be a little stinky. I do it outside and uh, it may well ruin an oven, so don't do it inside and don't do it in your main oven because you, you're going to get into trouble. Um, so you need to heat it to 120 degrees until the thing is dry and then it's activated and ready to go. Now I did an earlier video demonstration that I had to set this up as a water filtration unit and um, did a demonstration with Coca-Cola. But that's it, that's the second method of uh, making ultrasound. A little more complicated than the sugar method, but much cheaper to make because the um, heating time is so much lower and for so much, uh, such a short period of time, instead of being seven hours at um, 750 degrees, it's three hours at 400 degrees. So in terms of heating, very much cheaper to make it this way than it is to make it the sugar way. So, I hope that helped and I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching.